Hey everybody, Yami Sama here with a quick review of Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul is an MMORPG that's been out in Asia for a couple of years already, and it's finally been translated for use in North America and Europe. In this game, you're a member of the Hong Moon Clan, a group of people that train in the various classes of martial arts and magic found in the game. You are forced from your school prematurely when it's attacked by the villain of the game. I know I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, so I apologize to anyone who knows the actual pronunciation. The villain's name is in this patch that I'm using. Her name is Jin Seo Yoon. You enlist the help of sages and other teachers to strengthen your body, mind, and chi to defeat her while avenging your fallen brothers. So what we're going to do, we're going to get right into the character creation of this game, which by far is the most involved character creation I have ever used. There are some static elements like the hair and the eye styles which can be customized further by using sliders modifiers that they have on the side. With the sliders, you can customize also your character's height, the facial structures, the thickness and length of the various body parts on top of having a color palette that would help you create almost any character you want. Although one downside that I found was that there are very few non-Asian hairstyles. I mean, there's an afro in there, there's a mohawk, but other than that, it's very classic, like straight hair, really nice, a little bit of curl, a little bit of, you know, wave in it, but nothing, nothing other than that. While you're creating your character, they also give you different backgrounds and lightings and sample costumes and even poses that help you fine tune and tweak your character to your exact specifications. There are four races and seven classes in this game. Unfortunately, some classes are race specific. The first class I'm going to speak about in this game is called, at the moment, the Gone. This race reminds me of the tanks, monks, and juggernauts found in similar games. Their default body types are tall in stature and above average build for the males, while the females, while also tall, have a more voluptuous build. The Gon are the only race that can become destroyers, an axe-wielding class, while they share the Kung Fu Master class with the Jin. The Jin is the race that I would classify as the designated human or humanoid race for this game. They are, by default, of standard height and build. The Jin is the only race that can be an assassin while sharing the Kung Fu Master with the Gon and the Blade Master, the Swordsman class, with the Yoon. The Yoon are an all-female race that is the equivalent of elves in similar games. They are characterized by their lithe bodies, slightly longer fingers, and their regal and almost soft movements as they interact with the world. The Yoon have the option of sharing the Blade Master class with the Jin, and the Force Master class, the Fire Ice Mages, with the Lin. The Lin are the animal-human hybrid for the game. They are most notable by their ears, tail, and small statures. These characters can zip around the world as Force Masters, Blade Dancers, which are the Lin version of the Blade Masters, and Summoners, which are mages that have the ability to summon a feline companion to fight alongside. Gameplay in this game? Movement requires WASD, combined with mouse camera controls. So you're moving your character with WASD and you're also controlling the camera with your mouse while you're moving and while you're attacking. For me personally, it was a little odd to get used to. Both of those camera actions and a lot of other MMOs, you move your character and the camera just snapped with you unless you told it otherwise. But in this game, there are two separate entities. The default skill setup uses both numbers and letters on the keyboard. But these can be changed for comfort and or efficiency in the options menu. For example, I've had a couple friends that hate the default setup and they've managed to put a couple of their spells on their gamer mouse to make it easier and quicker to get those combos off. The graphics in this game are phenomenal. One of the best design games I have seen in a very long time. 
just evident by looking at the scenery and the props and buildings, like even down to like a pot on the floor. They took a lot of effort and a lot of care into designing this game. On the highest graphics, you see every detail, the wind blowing, the grass, you see the sun shining. You even feel like you're in the game and if you look at the sun, there's a glare in your eye. Even on the lowest setting, you don't have to have the top of the line computer to play this game. You could just have barely made the qualifications to play this game and it will still look fantastic for you. In this game, there isn't really armor technically. Like, you know how in other games, you're, say, an archer. Your armor is light armor or leather armor. If you're, like, a tank of some kind, you wear heavy armor or, like, chain mail or something like that. There's nothing like that in this game. Most of your stats comes from, the stats on your weapon come from your accessories that you put on. And they also come from an item in your inventory called a soul shield. The soul shield is filled up with eight pizza slices, I'm gonna call them. Eight pizza slices called boat pays. You either find them from monster drops or receive them from missions, character crafting, or various luck wheels throughout the world. These boat pays can be combined to strengthen a present attribute or add one that wasn't on the bow pay previously. You can also do the same thing for your weapons and accessories. You can upgrade them by sacrificing weaker versions of the weapon and or accessory to level it up. And then you can combine two accessories or weapons together to evolve the weapon or accessories to the next stage. The downside of this process is that as you get higher and higher into the upgrading evolution, it requires more and more gold and sometimes an additional item to aid in the upgrade or transformation. In this game, the grind is for your weapons and your items. You don't really grind levels in this game. It's you do your quest, you will level up the way you're supposed to level up. You don't have to go grind out for levels. What you grind for is your weapons and accessories and items to level them up with. The inventory in this game isn't just to hold your items. There are also very important links at the bottom of your inventory that help you with what I mentioned before, the item upgrading, the item fusion, transforming items, all that is found at the bottom of your inventory. Inventory can be expanded about four times with in-game gold before you have to use a cash shop item to expand it further. For people that are playing this game while spending as little amount of their actual money as possible, this presents a problem of inventory management and inventory juggling between the player's personal inventory and their warehouse. There might be a need to create a second character just to help your primary character hold all the things that it needs. The combat system for Bladed Soul revolves around the use of focus, the blue circles under your health, to fuel specific spells. An equivalent mechanic in other games would be mana or MP. In the early game, if your focus is depleted, you just need to basic attack or get out of combat and wait to regen the focus. But later in the game, there are combos, spells, and passives on your weapon that increase your focus recovery both in and out of battle. Even though this mechanic is the same for every class, the fighting styles throughout the classes are extremely varied and the way they interact with each other are very dynamic. When you first start out of the game, the game is really good with making sure you understand the most basic combos through one-on-one -on -one training sessions with a member of your clan. As you progress through the game and gain more skills, you'll find that your combos get more numerous and will build off of each other. There are basic spells, if you look at the bottom of their screen, where your skills are listed out. Those are skills that are available for you immediately. From those skills, you can fulfill prerequisites that cause skills to transform into others. For example, there might be a basic skill that occupies the one key, but because you, say, knocked up an enemy into an air, that one key is no longer that basic skill. It's now an awesome aerial combo button. So because you fulfill the prerequisite, it changes what skill 
is primary for that button while that prerequisite is still achieved. A flashing pop out of the button that you need to press often appears on the screen to let you know that the prerequisite has been filled and you have a short time period to press that button until the prerequisite need times out. Performing these specific combos is the key to mastering combat in Blade and Soul. Um. All in all, this is a game I already enjoy, and I plan to continue to play this game as soon as it's released in North America and Europe on January 19th. Even though this game is very enjoyable, there are some elements that can be annoying depending on the person. For example, if you're not a pay-to-win player, you have to deal with the juggling of items in your inventory and warehouse and may even have to create another character to help you hold what you need to keep, as I mentioned before. I know personally for me, if I move from zone to zone, I have to be very mindful of the fact that the items from one zone won't stack with the items from another, and I often find myself spending a decent amount of time reorganizing my inventory and warehouse just to go to another zone. You don't want to end up in another zone or a dungeon and not have space for the items you went there for. Also another thing that I feel would be a nagging point is the fact that the classes are sometimes restricted to a race. Like I know I had a friend that mentioned to me that he would love to play a Lin with a giant axe. He would love to have a destroyer Lin, but at the moment that's not a possibility. I wonder if that's something they can change in the future? If not, this game is still, despite all of its faults, has positives that greatly outweigh them in my opinion. This game is definitely worth testing out yourselves when it's released. I would like to mention that my review of this game is based off of a client that is used on an international server and it's most likely outdated in comparison to the client that's going to be released in NA later this month. Because of that, when it's released, I will release another video that will have the updated information for the game and if my views on certain things have changed, you will also find that out as well. I thank you for showing up and listening to this review of Blade and Soul, and I hope to see you guys in the game when it's released. See ya.